NHS Bradford and Airedale in West Yorkshire is committed to putting patients first and designing services around their needs. We serve half a million people from many different nationalities and backgrounds and we work hard to make sure that each person feels that they receive a very personal and individual care and service. Clinicians work very closely with managers to get the best service to patients and to listen to what really matters to them and their families. In this short film you will hear how this approach is being used in our work to provide care for people who are coming to the end of their lives. We asked people to think about their own death and to share their thoughts with us. We used a mobile video studio to collect the views of members of the public. The studio was a camper van parked outside the town hall in the very heart of the city of Bradford. We did this during Dying Matters Week in March. We thought it would be really hard to get people to talk about such a difficult subject. This wasn't what happened. People were really willing to talk to us. We heard that people would prefer to die in their own home rather than in hospital. We listen routinely to patients to understand what is important to them. Some people need the very specialist care that is available from a hospice. We have two hospices in our district. One of them is based in the heart of our multicultural city of Bradford and is provided by the Marie Curie charity. The other is in a more rural part of our district and is provided by the Sue Ryder charity. The hospices have 32 beds for intensive high level support and 300 people attend as outpatients. There are around 1,300 people who need intensive support at home. Within palliative care services, when we first see a patient, we'll go and see them um, in a place of their choice, usually at home, um, and we'll try to find out what the most difficult things are at that time. And for some people, it might be that they're having troublesome symptoms, things like pain or sickness or anxiety um, and so we might make suggestions about things they can try to, for that symptom. Um, we might give them a prescription for something to make it easier or speak to their GP about it or maybe refer them to the hospital for some different treatment. Um, the problems they're having might be different, they might be um, financial, they might be worried about how to go about making a will or how to get somebody to speak for them if they ever become unable to speak for themselves and make their needs known. Um, it might be that they're worried about um, their children being supported. Um, it might be that there are housing problems or other social difficulties. And so here in the community we have quite a big team. Um, we work with a social worker, with counsellors and psychologists. We've got ethnic liaison workers who can help us um, access um, the parts of the community that I think previously haven't had a very fair bite of the apple in terms of services. The um, South Asian patients who might not have English as their first language, um, just to try and make palliative care available more widely so that everybody can have an opportunity to have um, a good experience at the end of their life or as good as it can be at a time that's really difficult and really challenging. End of Life Care is a support service that we provide to patients who have been diagnosed with a life-limiting illness. It's a service that we also extend to carers and their family members. And what's quite important here is to understand that any such service should not focus only on the dying aspects of that patient's journey, but should work with the patient and their carers to ensure that they can live as well a life as possible with that illness. In Bradford, we have a long-standing commitment to working with service users and making sure that we can deliver high-quality end-of-life care. We've also been holding mixed workshops that have comprised of members of the staff and the public, and they've been targeted at staff and members of the public who have helped somebody close to them through dying. Our main purpose has been to identify what the high and low points of that journey have been, so again, we can start to, if you like, stitch in to the appropriate parts of the pathway, improvements and refinements. 
as an entirely lateral approach to improving the patient journey, we surveyed our staff and we asked them, if you were diagnosed with a life-limiting illness, what would your reaction be? And most of them clearly said that they'd be quite upset, but their biggest concern was the impact such news would have on their family or their loved ones. And they were quite insistent that despite the news being quite unwelcome, possibly being quite traumatic, they would want to know. NHS Bradford and Airedale has also taken part in a National Department of Health Pay Setters programme. One of the themes that we have as part of that programme is to work with the local Muslim community to understand their end-of-life care needs. It's an ongoing piece of work, but what we are doing is analysing the feedback so again we can start to make our services congruent with the needs of that population, particularly around religious and cultural dimensions. And also accept that the whole kind of journey of death and dying can be quite peculiar depending on social, religious and cultural demographics. We've also run a set of uh, focus groups with the black and minority ethnic communities around the theme of resuscitation. And what's been evident is that the theme of resuscitation can be quite confusing, not only to those patients or families that have limited English, but also equally puzzling to those that speak very fluent and quite confident English. What we've decided to do as a result is to have a, an awareness campaign where we can start to talk about what does resuscitation mean and also what does a, a long-term will mean. Just to be able to, if you like, enhance local understanding so people can make better informed choices. As commissioners, we need to ensure that the care individuals receive towards the end of life is compassionate, respectful, and that it's interlaced with dignity and, and sensitivity. And in order to do that, providers must be able to work with the patients who have been diagnosed as terminally ill, those that have life-limiting conditions. We can only do that if we have good, good communication and good information, and we can actually identify the appropriate cohort of patients that we need to work with. What we're doing finally in Bradford is working very closely with all the key stakeholders involved in that patient journey around end of life. We have strong relationships, we have good rapport, and we have an excellent understanding and commitment across the patch around end of life. There are two elements to getting things right in the health service. One of these is about clinical practice and how doctors and nurses care and treat us in the best and safest way. And the other is about what it actually feels like to be on the receiving end of our services. At times of high emotion, an illness, birth, end of life and death are high emotional experiences. Our feelings are very powerful. The emotion involved means that we remember the experience long after it's passed. Most of the memories are of care, kindness, that go beyond people's expectations. And hearing about some of these acts of kindness where people have really gone out of their way to make a real difference for people makes me really proud to be part of the NHS. But sometimes those memories are painful. They're painful for us to hear. When things haven't gone well and when we hear about unkindness and lack of compassion, it's sad. Understanding people's experience and designing services that take into account their emotions is the way that patients' experience can be improved. We've been working with the NHS Institute for Improvement and Innovation to be effective in the way we go about this. Our work with the End of Life programme is only part of the work being carried out by NHS Bradford and Airedale to capture and understand patients' experiences in order to improve services. As well as working with the NHS Institute, we're working with the Management School of Bradford University to develop a patient experience management toolkit to guide patient experience management practice. If you're interested in more information about patient experience, please follow the details at the end of this video. Thank you.